Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. Now that we've talked about how visualizers work, it's time to talk a little bit more about the nuts and bolts of how they work. Because to understand what you need and whether a visualizer's the best thing for you, it would be a good idea to understand what you're getting yourself into when it comes to visualizing your lights. Just like a lighting console doesn't program itself, a visualizer doesn't build a scene itself. It doesn't build the virtual world that you're in all by itself by any means, okay? And so in this video, I just wanna take a look at the workflow of a visualizer, how you get there, what you do, and what you need, okay? Now, the first question, and pro the, probably one of the first things a lot of people set up is you think about, okay, do I need some kind of special box to get my DMX into my visualizer? And that's a great question. It used to be that you would come straight DMX out of a lot of lighting consoles and, and then hit a USB to DMX box or something similar and come into your visualizer. That simply isn't the case anymore. Today, since pretty much any lighting software or console can output ArtNet or SACN, that's networked DMX, we've got more info on it here. Because pretty much any console can output that kind of data, there is no reason why you can't just go from your software or console straight to the visualizer through a network cable. No boxes, no nothing, okay? Um, of course, the biggest thing is that if you're going to be using it, you, you gotta make sure that you have enough output license on your console side and on your visualizer side, you have enough input license, to, whether that be universes, channels, parameters, whatever, and then you're good to go, okay? Awesome. Now, once we've done that, let's take a look at what visualizers look like and how to build things in a visualizer. When it comes to building things in a visualizer, the very first thing you generally do is build your room, your space that you're in. Now, this is technically optional, but it's good to put some walls in, put some stage pieces in, maybe throw some people up on stage, because this is going to give you an idea of how things look with actual people on stage and the stage being in an actual space, which is where it will be, right? In the real, in the real show. That's a good step one. Now, different visualizers like Capture or L8 or Depends or Magic Viz or Grand MA 3D all have slightly different ways of accomplishing this, but you can generally think of it as like building in computer-aided drafting. Sure, some programs are definitely more CAD-like, like Capture, whereas ones like L8 are a little more like a video game, but either way, you're going to go to the, the library that's within the program and find the various pieces that you need, whether it be stage pieces, trusses, etc., and you'll be dragging those in. You'll duplicate things, move things around, and get your stage set up just right so it looks exactly how you want. After that, you're then going to go ahead and think about your lighting. Now let's stop for a second right there. The cool thing about modern visualizers is they don't just do lighting anymore. Oh no, no. When I first bought into Capture and I first started using it as a visualizer, it was pretty much just for lighting. But now these visualizers are an entire show visualizer that have all sorts of elements. So we've got lighting, but we've also got lasers. We've also got video, okay? We've also got LED walls that are made of video as well as the projectors. And all of these things are wrapped up as well as sometimes even things like pyrotechnics, water fountains, um, fog and haze, of course, atmosphere in the air. All of these things are, are put together so that you can really visualize your whole show. And so in a visualizer, once you've got your scene, you know, you've got your building or whatever built out real nice and you can add textures and things like that to make it really realistic, it's now time to go ahead and start bringing in your fixtures. These are gonna be your lights, your media, your video, your LED walls, all that stuff. Now, whenever we're building things in a visualizer, if you are going to be pre-programming, or even if it's just for renderings ahead of time, 
you want to be as accurate as possible. Okay, if you have measurements of the space you're going to work with, then you want to use those measurements and put things in as right places as possible. The closer you get to being accurate in the visualizer, the easier your life will be when you transition from pre-programming to actually being in the space with the lights. Once you've built everything, the cool thing about a visualizer is now you can go ahead and program. And you can switch between different sets or buildings or venues with ease. Because instead of having to set up and tear down everything, you just open a new file. If you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe here because next on this playlist of visualizers, we're going to talk about multiple different visualizers and really give you a good review so you can tell if it's the right visualizer for your needs. So be on the lookout for that next. After that, we've got even more tutorials on the visualizers mentioned within Learn Stage Lighting Lab, so you also don't want to miss that out there. Awesome. If you want more info, head to learnstagelighting.com labs or click on the screen. Subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.